The war on hemp has come to North Carolina. I'm Morgan Davis, an attorney focusing on business and cannabis in North Carolina. Let's talk about how to keep your business protected and thriving. So last month we talked about legislation sweeping the nation, regulating or even banning in some cases cannabinoids. Most of them targeting what we would consider intoxicating or alternative cannabinoids like Delta-8, Delta-10, HHC, etc. This month, as anticipated, legislation has been filed in North Carolina. Some of it's a little more narrow, some of it's very, very broad. And all of it is a potential problem if you are in the hemp products industry in North Carolina. So if you're watching this, imagine there's huge sirens going off above my head, big flashing letters, pay attention. The first bill we're going to talk about that was filed um, just a couple of days ago is SB 366. Now, at first glance, this bill looks to basically only ban cannabinoids on school property. Doesn't seem like a big deal. Um, most of the time, we don't imagine that any sort of cannabis product, hemp or otherwise, is going to be useful on school property because we think children, they don't need to be using products. Plus anyone under 18 isn't allowed to have them in North Carolina. Most people now are preventing anyone purchasing products under the age of 21. That is in one of the bills that we've seen proposed. So as a general rule, we don't anticipate that you're going to have hemp products on school grounds. However, closely read, this bill goes beyond that. It says no one can use any hemp product on school grounds during school hours, or even if you're just there for a school event. So that means if you are an adult who has a topical hemp cream that they use because they get arthritis in their hands or they have eczema, any, any number of things that you could imagine, um, and they just have a lotion basically that includes hemp in it, this statute says you can't do that. You can't have that product on school grounds. So it's a lot broader than one would think. And it does attach potential criminal liability to anyone who violates it. So be aware. Second bill is really a much, much, much bigger problem. Um, SB 521. So this is one of the first bills we've seen this year that tries to start regulating the, canna the cannabinoid industry. As we've discussed previously, for many years, we've all been waiting for the FDA to come out with regulations about packaging, labeling, manufacturing, dosage for hemp-derived products or cannabis-derived products. That still hasn't happened. And so in the last year, we've seen states start to attempt that regulation on their own. And some of it's worked well. Some of it's been a complete disaster. This year so far, as we've discussed, most of it's been pretty disastrous for the hemp industry, especially anybody operating in the alternative cannabinoid space. SB 521 is no different. The two biggest problems that I see in my initial read of it are one, it removes smokable hemp products from the exception that is carved out for all other hemp products from the North Carolina Controlled Substances Act. What does this mean? Well, if anybody remembers a couple of years ago when North Carolina first passed hemp, they then rolled it back a little bit and made smokable hemp illegal. Why? Because smokable hemp and marijuana are not distinguishable by sight or smell. They look and smell the same. And so when hemp first became legal in North Carolina, law enforcement agencies went nuts because they realized that if somebody can legally possess something that looks and smells like marijuana, it threatens their ability to search someone based on the smell or view of marijuana. So we had a period of time where smokable hemp became illegal, and then that went away and it was now legal, which is a huge boon for North Carolina farmers who want to produce and sell their own flour. 
it's one of the only things that they can grow and then sell without having to sell it wholesale their flour to someone who's then going to turn it into a downstream product like CBD oil. This remo removes smokable hemp products from the exception for hemp that exists currently, which means, though it doesn't say this explicitly, I think that means that smokable hemp products, if this were to pass, would once again be illegal. So huge problem there. Second big problem is that it changes the North Carolina THC standard from the federal standard to a what I am deeming a total THC concentration standard plus a any intoxicating cannabinoids kicker. So let me talk a little bit more about that. As you may all know now, the federal standard for what is hemp is something that is grown with a THC concentration, a delta 9 THC concentration of 0.3% or less. North Carolina adopted the same standard. So something that is hemp has a delta 9 THC standard of 0.3% or less. This changes that standard to a total THC standard, meaning they're not just going to measure delta 9 concentration. They're going to look at what the delta 8, what the THCA concentration is. Anything that is a THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, any form of it that's in the product will be taken into consideration and must be within that 0.3% standard. So that means there's going to be a lot less THC in the products roaming around on the market. But then they add a little kicker at the end, which says total THC and any intoxicating cannabinoid. Why is that a problem? Intoxicating, how do we define that? Well, I know how we define that if it's alcohol. You are intoxicated at 0.08 blood alcohol concentration or more, right? We don't know how much you have to have in your system to be intoxicated on THC of any kind. We have roadside tests if you're operating a motor vehicle, but how are you going to look at someone sitting across from you at dinner and say, you, sir, are intoxicated? You might have a layman understanding of that, but that's not a legal standard. And we're certainly not going to roll around testing everyone who's ingested a THC product as to whether or not they're intoxicated. We don't have the manpower for that, and we still don't have the standard for that. So this add-on of any intoxicating cannabinoid is problematic. One, for the use of the word intoxicating, but two, for the use of the whole phrase, any intoxicating cannabinoid. If intoxicating is defined as anything that is quote unquote psychoactive, or it interacts with your system and potentially has some psychological effect, well, that's absolutely every cannabinoid you're going to ingest. Some of the anecdotal evidence that people tout all the time for CBD is the fact that it helps with stress, anxiety, uh, sleep. While none of that's been approved by the FDA and it's only anecdotal, that in and of itself is a psychoactive reaction in your body. It is affecting your psychological reaction to the product, your brain chemistry, your physical chemistry. It interacts with your endocannabinoid system, yada, yada, yada. It's psychoactive. Is it intoxicating? Again, how are we defining that? So this whole definition is very problematic. And what it results in is this overly broad, undefined uh, definition of what is now illegal per THC standard. It's going to make operating in the space really difficult and basically put you, put any company that's got hemp products, making hemp products, selling hemp products in North Carolina in a gray area. Um, some of the things in this bill are okay. It does ask for establishment of good manufacturing practices and licensing for manufacturing. We've all been wanting that for a while, so that could potentially be a good thing. It doesn't say what those standards are going to be. It just simply says that it's going to task the um, commission with establishing them. And it 
specifically removes hemp as an adulterant. So as we've talked about in previous videos, one of the issues with the FDA not approving hemp or hemp derivatives as a food additive is that they continue to be considered an adulterant in foods, really anything that is for human consumption. This says that hemp in and of itself in a product does not make it adulterated in North Carolina. So it does take off some of the pressure if you're complying with every other part of the hemp statute, your food product or your product for human consumption is, is specifically no longer considered adulterated in the state of North Carolina. So that is a good thing that we've been looking for for a while. However, the smokable hemp product issue and the THC standard issue make this bill not a good one for the hemp industry in North Carolina. So make sure that you're watching out for SB 521 and SB 366 as they start to pass through com committees in the Senate. And we will be watching for you as well. Take a look next month for an update on where they're at.